Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us once again. Hope everybody had a very happy and blessed new year. And uh, hope everybody has been safe and taking care of themselves and wearing their face coverings and so forth and following all of the safety protocols to keep yourself safe. So it's truly a blessing to be back with us once again. Amen. And uh, so I want us to continue to pray for those who we've been asking for prayer on our prayer and our healing list. And, and also pray for those who are uh, still in bereavement. Amen. Uh, I ask you for a special prayer for uh, some of my uh, family members who have lost loved ones as well. I would ask you to continue to pray for them and hold them up in prayer as well. Continue to pray for our church, our church family, and uh, also continue to hold uh, Pastor Hill up in a lot of prayer and uh, ask you to hold uh, Reverend Arnold and Sister Arnold up in prayer as well, as well as all of our church members and uh, our church officers and ministers and so forth. Amen? So, with that said, if you will, if you bow your head with some word of prayer. Our Father, we come once again into that holy presence, and we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking your blessing to your Lord, thanking you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, dear Lord, for the freedom of life in your spirit. And we just pray that you would continue to uh, let your spirit fall fresh upon us, dear Lord. Let this be a year uh, of blessings, dear Lord, that we have never seen before. Let it be such blessings, dear Lord, that uh, we'll be able, dear Lord, to take them and use them and use them all for your glory. So we just ask your blessing now, Father God, on those whom we've asked for prayer, those who are not sick and are shut in this, and those who are still in bereavement, Father. We just ask you to touch them right now to heal the love and power as only you can. This we pray in your mighty name and for your sake. Amen. Okay, let us get after our lesson. Now, those of you who have been studying along with us uh, in the past few weeks uh, in this lesson that we've been dealing with, or if you are just now joining us, uh, we started our lesson here in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, and, and we looked at verses 7 where we titled our study, Discovering Your God-Given Worth. Amen? S Discovering Your God-Given Worth. Uh, where we showed us here in this first Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Amen? Where the Lord said he, he does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And, and we have been looking at uh, several other scriptures which parallel uh, our primary scripture here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh, dealing with our self-worth. And, and I pray that that study has been uh, uplifting for us and I hope it has been encouraging for us. So we're going to continue uh, that study today. Amen. Now, I don't have time to go back through uh, all of the things that we looked at here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I hope those of you who've been following along with us have been taking some very copious notes and, and I hope the lesson has been a blessing to us. But today I want to start out here in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to pick back up there because I think that's where we left off at a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to pick back up here at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and we're going to be looking at uh, this 12th verse. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. Uh, and we're looking at this here from the NIV translation. Amen. It says, Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Amen? Even as I am fully known. Now, <clears throat> let me explain that just a little bit here for us. You see, in other words, in the New Testament, 
which at that time was not completed. Uh, we have a completed revelation, but our understanding of it is partial. Amen? But we won't know the full revelation until Jesus comes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen? We won't know the full revelation until Jesus comes. Now, the only someone who knows us fully is Jesus Christ. He's the only someone who knows us fully. We don't even know ourselves fully. Because, you know, Jeremiah, uh, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, a word it says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked who can know it. Amen. So we don't even know our own selves fully. You see, you, you, you see the mask and the false fronts that people wear to disguise their real feelings, their real intentions, and their real self may fool the people around them, amen, but are useless against God. You see, he knows us from the inside out. You see, with a gauge that, 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 that's more powerful than an x-ray, the Lord, he peers beyond our facades and, and, and straight into the heart, amen, and straight into the heart, the very core of our being. You see, so, so, so what is there cannot be masked? Well, all of our jealousies, all of our deceitfulness and our rage and our ugliness are on display for him, amen, and, and subject to his judgment. You see, we can fool everybody else around us, but we can't fool God. He sees right through us, amen. The Lord does more than just look at the heart. Please listen. However, he can transform hearts and renew us from the inside out. Amen? He can transform us, our hearts, and renew us from the inside out. And only God can do that. Now, a couple of weeks ago when we concluded our lesson, I had shared with you that uh, I was going to give you a checklist of low self-worth. So keep in mind now what, what, we're, what we're studying here. We're talking about our God-given worth. Amen? And, and a couple of weeks ago when we uh, concluded the lesson, I had indicated to you that I was going to give us a checklist for low self-worth. And, and I'm going to stay true to that today. Amen? So, so I, I want you to, to uh, just uh, follow along with me very carefully here. Uh, these are not litmus tests or anything of that nature. Amen? Uh, th this, is, this is for you to know for yourself whether or not you are dealing with low self-worth. Amen? Many people are dealing with that and don't even realize. Okay? So we're going to try to uh, unpack that for us here today. Okay? Now... To determine whether you are suffering with low self-worth, I want you to place a check mark by the statements that I'm going to be giving you. Amen? If you feel that you. So, but you want to be very honest with yourself. Don't just be, you know, checking off anything. Just be, be very honest with yourself. If you feel that you. Amen? I want you to put a check mark by these statements that I'm going to be giving you. Okay? This is dealing with your inner insecurities. Amen? Your inner insecurities. Now, number one is this. I am critical and have feelings of self-loathing. I am critical and have feelings of self-loathing. Now, that word loathing, that self-loathing, that's a feeling of intense dislike or disgust or hatred. Okay? All right. Now, I'm not going to run through these too fast for you because I want you to understand what we're talking about here and I want you to be able to get this. Amen? 
The second thing is this. Am I fearful of failure and avoid risk taking? Am I fearful of failure and avoid risk taking? Okay? You see, a lot of people feel uh, they, they, they'll never reach their full potential because they feel like they're going to fail. And, and, and they don't want to take no risk. See, there's risk in everything. There's risk in sitting down to the table eating because you don't know what's in the food. All you do is bless it, ask God to bless it, sanctify it, move any impurities that might be on it, and eat. Amen. We take risks all the time. So don't be afraid to take risk. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. And the third thing is this. Am I overly impacted by the opinions of others and strive to meet their standards? Or are you overly impacted by the opinions of others and strive to meet their standards? Amen. Now that's a bar that never never gets you know, it's, it's always getting higher and higher. You, you, you'll never reach that, uh, that plateau. Amen? You'll never reach it. Don't worry about the opinions of others. Worry about what God thinks about you. Worry about what God sees in you. Amen? And, 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 and meet His standard. Because you'll never meet the standard of other people. Amen? That, that, that's, that's something there to do. That's like a dog chasing his tail. It'll never happen. So, so, so just worry about the opinions and worry about what God thinks about you. Don't look at what other people think about you. So, so, so please understand my third question to you here. Are you overly impacted by the opinions of others and strive to meet their standards? All right? Now, fourth thing I want to share with you here is this. Am I undeserving of and yet desperate for the approval of others? Am I undeserving of and yet desperate for the approval of others? Amen? That's another bar that's too high. You see? Don't worry about trying to meet the approval of others. People might approve of you today and tomorrow it'll be something entirely different. Amen? You see? Just be mindful of who you are trying to please. We're trying to please God. The Bible says, I believe it's in Galatians 1 and 10 where it says, am I yet trying to please men or am I trying to please God? You will never please the flesh. Please understand. Okay? Now, the fifth thing is this. This is the fifth. Am I unhappy with my personal appearance and personal achievements? Am I unhappy with my personal appearance and personal achievements? Amen? You know, people do all kinds of things to change what they look like. Amen. They do all kinds of stuff to their to the nose, their the, uh, the cheeks, and their rear end, and their chest front, and all kinds of different things to change themselves because they do not like who they are. But God made you. He made you perfect. Perfect in His image. Be satisfied with who you are. Amen. You see, no matter what you do to yourself, it's not going to change who you are on the inside. Okay? It's not, you're not going to change who you are on the inside. Some people, they change all that stuff about them and still miserable on the inside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen? Now, number six is this. Am I negligent of my appearance? Am I negligent of my appearance? You know, sometimes when we feel like we are not feeling with low self-worth, we, we won't take care of our appearance. We'll just say, well, don't nobody think I'm 
worth nothing anyway. Don't nobody think I'm important anyway. So I, I'll just let myself go. No. That's the wrong attitude. God cares about you. You care about you. Don't worry about what you have or don't have. As long as you have Jesus, amen, you're looking good. You're in good shape. Amen? So don't worry about that. Just take care of yourself the best you can with what you have. God knows what you have and what you don't have. And he'll take care of the rest. Are you listening? All right? Now, number seven is this. Am I unable to set boundaries? Or are you unable to set boundaries? Or do you just, uh, just let folks just do whatever they want to do to you? Or, or, or just let people uh, treat you any kind of way and so forth because you don't feel like you uh, meet up to their standards and so forth? Amen? Set some boundaries for yourself. Set some boundaries. Amen? You see? God wants us to set boundaries. He gives us boundaries. Boundaries promote love. Okay? So set some boundaries. Don't just fall for anything. Listen to me carefully today. Now, number eight is this. Am I ashamed of my background? And I often struggle with depression. Are you ashamed of your background? Amen? You see? Because, see, if you are, that usually sets us up for depression. See? Don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't be ashamed of where you come from. Don't be ashamed of your background. Amen? You see, God knows where you came from. He knows where you're at right now. You see? God will bless you right where you are right now. So, so, so don't be ashamed of where you came from. Don't be ashamed of your background. You see? If you're struggling with with, with, with depression and so forth, amen, you, you know, develop you a personal relationship with the Lord, okay? And if depression, if, if, if your depression has become so severe, then just, just seek you some counseling, seek you some help, amen? God loves you. He created you in his image, you see? And God don't want us walking around like that. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to share is, is this. Are you controlled by a victim mentality? Do you always feel like you're a victim? Are you controlled by that victim mentality? I'm a victim because of this. I'm a victim because of that. No, you're not. You're a child of the Most High God. You're not a victim. Amen? Sometimes, sometimes society and sometimes people will make you feel like you're a victim. But you're not a victim. And if you're not a child of God, then if I was you, I, I wouldn't wait to try to be a child of God. Amen? And we'll talk about how you can become a child of God later on in our, in, in our study. Okay? Now, the tenth thing is this. I am inferior and incomplete or incompetent when compared to others. Amen? I am inferior and incomplete when compared to others. Remember Mephibosheth over there in our uh, primary text there in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. Remember we talked about Mephibosheth. Amen. You see? Just go back and, and reread that. Okay? You don't have to be inferior. Because you are somebody special. You're created in the image of God. You don't have to be inferior of anybody. You don't have to feel incomplete. Because God has already completed you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Okay? So, so, so if you are struggling with insecurities, you need to take heart. These words of encouragement are from the word of God. Right here in Deuteronomy chapter 3. And verses 1 through 6. Take encouragement from these words. Look, look, look what the word of God says here. Amen? Look what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6. Just, just write it down. It says, Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's powerful. Believe that. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Amen. For the Lord your God goes with you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Wherever you go, Jesus Christ is right there with you. He's right there with you. The Holy Spirit goes with you wherever you go. Amen. Just, just continue to have a great relationship with the Lord. Have a great prayer life. Amen. And, and study some word. Put you some word inside of you. You see. Amen. And don't be afraid. Because there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. Then he talked about. He said. Am, am I overly critical. And distasteful. Or, or rather distrustful of others. Are you overcritical. And distrust of, of, of others. Amen. See, we, did, we just finished the lesson here just before prior to doing this lesson here. was talking about not being, being an encourager and not a critic. Don't be so critical of us. Don't be so distrustful. Amen. Now, now we have to be careful there. You know, we, we just can't just, just give our hearts and, and everything to any, just anybody. But we don't want to be distrustful all the time. Okay? And don't want to be critical of others. Because we all have some flaws. We all have some stuff that we're working on, that we're dealing with. Amen? And, and the next one is, are you, am I demanding and unforgiving of others? Am I demanding and unforgiving of others? Listen, the Word of God tells us, if we hold unforgiveness in our hearts, He said He won't hear our prayers. So if you're harboring unforgiveness in your heart, then, then you, you cannot have an effective prayer life. Amen? You cannot have an effective prayer life. You see? And, 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 and see, we can't demand something for someone that we're not willing to give. Amen? You know? If you want forgiveness, then you have to be able to forgive. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the next thing is this. Am I defensive when confronted? When you're confronted about something, do you get defensive? Amen? You see, the Bible tells us to let your yes be yes and let your no be no. You don't have to set up and defend yourself and give an elaborate explanation about anything. If it's yes, it's yes. If it's no, it's no. Amen? You see? Don't be so defensive all the time. It makes you, it makes you feel guilty and it makes you look guilty. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay? And the next thing is, are you argumentative and, and, and resistant to authority? You know, some people just argumentative. They, they, they just find, they argue about everything. And, and when they can't find something to argue about, they'll invent something to argue about. Amen? You see, and they're res and being resistance against authority. You see, the Bible talks to us about being respectful of those who have rule over us and so forth. Amen? You see? So don't be, don't be argumentative. Because when, when, we, when we're being argumentative and with a bad attitude, that, that kind of drives people away from us. And it separates us from the Lord. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the next thing here is this. Are you undeserving of and unable to accept compliments? Amen? Are you undeserving or feel that you're undeserving and unable to accept compliments? You see? If someone gives you a compliment, just accept it. Just say, well, thank you. Amen? Because you're somebody special, just like everybody else. You deserve your compliments as well. And when people don't compliment you, don't feel bad. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You see? And the next thing that I want to share with you is this. Are you afraid to get close to people and establish intimacy? 
Are you afraid to get close to people and establish intimacy? Now, some people are afraid to let themselves get close to people because maybe they have been hurt once before. They say, I'm never going to be hurt again. I'm never going to get close to anybody again. I'm never going to trust anybody again. That's not the way to live. Amen. That's not the way God wants you to live. Okay? God will take care of your enemies. You see? So don't be afraid to trust. Don't be afraid to, to love. Amen? And the next thing I want to share with the church is this. I am at peace at all costs. I am at peace at all costs. People please me. Amen. Am I at peace at all costs? Oh, people please her. You'll never be able to please everybody all the time. Amen. Use that energy in pleasing God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with, with, with being, you know, pleasing folks, but don't go around trying to just please everybody. Because you can't do it. No matter what you do, that bar just keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Amen? You see? And or are you reluctant to express your true feelings? Are you reluctant to express your true feelings? Amen? Some people don't want to share their true feelings because they feel like they might be ridiculed or they might uh, 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 they might say something that they might be ashamed of or whatever. They don't want to reveal their true feelings. That's a horrible way to live. You know? We do it in our prayer to the Lord. Tell, don't be ashamed to tell the Lord how you feel. You see, I don't mean to go around telling everybody about what you feel, but don't be ashamed, amen, to express your true feelings. Okay? Or are you hesitant to accept responsibility for your wrongs? When you're wrong, just say you're wrong. Amen? See, pride tells you, pride says, oh, I'm never wrong. Everything I do is right. Even when, it, even, even when it's wrong, in my sight, it's still right. I'm going to make it right. Just accept the fact that you're not perfect. We all make mistakes. We all say things sometimes that we wish we wouldn't have said or wish we could take back. Amen? Don't be hesitant to accept your responsibility for your wrongs. Just say I'm wrong. You'd be surprised that the weight lifts us up off of you. Because you're not perfect. When you try to say, well, what I said or what I did, it, you know, and try to rationalize, what you're basically saying is I'm perfect. And you're not. Stop lying to yourself. Amen? Am I often afraid to defend myself? Don't never be afraid to defend yourself. Amen? Don't be afraid to defend yourself. You see? If you have to defend yourself, just say, listen, this didn't happen or that didn't happen or whatever. And then let it go. You, you don't have to sit around and just continuously over and over and over trying to defend yourself. Amen? Now, if you struggle with establishing healthy relationships, if you struggle with that, and a lot of people do, a lot of people struggle with establishing healthy relationships. They do A lot of people just go out just because they feel like, you know, they just got to have somebody and just need somebody, and then they'll just get involved with just anybody. But if you struggle with establishing healthy relationship, you need to know that what the Word of God tells you there in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, where it says, Fear of men will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Amen? That's Proverbs 29 and verse 25. Okay? So, 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 so we, we want to talk a little bit about now 
Well, what are substitutes for healthy self-worth? Well, what are some substitutes for healthy self-worth? Amen. Because we we are worth some we are we are worth somebody. We are somebody. Amen. You see, God has established our worth. Okay? So now, although you was powerless to prevent, say, unjustified beatings when you was a, say you was a kid. You was, you was, you was powerless. You see? To prevent those unjustified beatings at home that you learned how, amen, and you learned how to get power by overpowering, say, the other children. You know, you didn't have, you, you couldn't do nothing about it when you was a child at home. But you learn how to overpower other children and other people. You see, this gives you the feeling of significance. Okay, people like that, it gives them, it gives them a feeling of significance, a, a, a sense of self-worth. Okay, a sense of self-worth. You, you, you probably felt, well, if, if I am being tough, then I can survive. If I'm being tough. I, I can survive from being tough. That's what happens. We see a lot of that happen with young people today. They feel like they got to be tough to survive out here because that's all they know. Amen? You see? You bully the other children. You see? They bullied me, so I bullied them. You were never subtle in it either. You pushed, you shoved, you hit. Amen? You see? If another person or another child, when you was coming up, if they wouldn't let you say, uh, see, uh, here's or her toys, for instance, okay? What would you do? You grab it, you take it, okay? The others didn't hit you, but what you do? You hit them, and then you felt good about it. Yet some people feel good about doing other people wrong. It, it makes them look like they, you know, it lifts them up some kind of way. Or Amen? You see, all of this false bravado merely serves as a substitute for true self-worth. Amen? In other words, a quick fix. All right? You don't have to do that. Okay? That, that, that's, that, that's not the way we are supposed to conduct ourselves as children of God. Amen? You see, that was really not a fix. It really wasn't. Amen? Please listen to me very carefully. This is so very important to the quality of your life. It's so very important. If you are suffering with low self-worth, you may be seeking ways to deny, disguise, diminish your emotional pain. You may be trying to disguise it. Amen? You see, we cope with our woundedness. We all do it in different ways, but we cope with our woundedness in different ways. However, many of these ways, please listen carefully, do not offer a cure, but rather are a counterfeit. Okay? A counterfeit, an adhesive band-aid that only cover up the wound without healing. That's all it does. Just cover it up, but it doesn't heal. Amen? So the problem with, with, with self-worth substitutes is that they do not deal with with the cause of your pain. Amen? The wrong beliefs that festers in the heart and mind. They don't deal with that. You see? The true solution to low self-worth is to apply the healing balm, which is truth, to the wound, which is the soul. Apply truth. The Bible says the truth will make you free. Amen? So in order that you, that, that your mind will be transformed and your life changed. So, so beware 
of worldly substitutes. Sometimes we go out in the world looking for substitutes, amen, to, 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 to cure our pain and so forth. Amen? That ultimately do not satisfy at all. Just causes us more pain. You see? Just causes more pain. Let, let, let me share something with you. Let, let me share some scripture here with you. I, I, I want you to turn with me to 1 John. 1 John, we want to look at chapters uh, 2 and look at verses 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17. Amen? Look what it says. It says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, Amen? Everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives for heaven. Amen? The person who lives for the will of God lives for heaven. You see, if you are suffering, and I, I pray that you're not, but if you are, if you're suffering with low self-worth and think that you may be pursuing a substitute kind of to make up for an emotional deficit that you're dealing with, amen, I, I want you to do this for me. Just do this. Just put a check mark beside some questions that I'm going to be uh, posing to. Now, we might not get through all of them. I just gave you some earlier, but I, I want you to uh, uh, put a check mark by this. Okay? All right? If so. All right? So the first question is this. Are you impressed with status symbols and often live beyond your income? That's very important. Are you impressed with status symbols and live above and beyond your income? These are the questions you need to be honest with about yourself. Because it could be causing you to feel like you deal with low self-worth. Amen? When you live beyond your income, you're always on the chase. You're always on the change. You're living in a deficit, in other words. Amen? You're always in a deficit. Because now you're spending more than what you're making. That can cause depression. And if you're married, it can cause all kinds of marital problems. Don't spend more than what you make. Amen? The second thing is, are you overly competitive? And view losing as a reflection of your value and your worth. Let me say that again. Are you overly competitive? Oh, I just got to win all the time. And view losing as a reflection of your value and your worth. You don't have to win all the time. Amen? You don't have to win all the time. The world says, if I don't win, I'm going to lose. No, you're a loser. If you don't have a relationship with God, you're a loser if you're not saved. That's what constitutes a loser. Amen? You, not only are you a loser, you're a loser eternally. And we don't want to do that. And the third point I want to give you here is, are you seeking approval? And are you envious of important people? Are you seeking approval? And are you envious of important people? Don't be envious of another one. Amen? You're just as important as everyone else. It doesn't matter about what you have or what you don't have. You're just as important as everyone else. Amen? It's the sin to be envious. God tells us not to be envious of one another. 
And just let me give you a couple more here, then we're going to break it up. Are you constantly striving for recognition? Or I, I just got to have recognition. Amen. See, if you're looking for recognition, then look to Jesus. Because people might not recognize you, or might not give you the recognition that you deserve. Amen. And the next thing is this. Are you perfectionistic in an attempt to earn approval? Are you perfectionistic? None of us are perfect. No matter how perfect you try to be, you still might not get the approval of others. Amen? As long as God approves of you, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what others approve of you or don't approve of you. It has no real significant value. Amen? And the last thing I want to share is, are you addicted to substances such as sex, food, shopping, and so forth? If you're addicted to those type of things, then you need to seek some kind of help for that. Amen? You need to seek help for that. Are you angry and intimidated at times? Amen. In a zeal to accomplish your goal. Things don't go your way. You can't get your way. You get angry. And so forth. Impatient. Seek the approval of the Lord. God said he'll supply all you need according to his riches and glory. Don't get much better than that. Amen. Don't get much better than that. Now, I'm kind of out of time right now. And we're going to come back next week and we're going to finish unpacking this. And uh, I, I hope it's making sense to you and I hope that we have taken uh, our study series uh, because if, you, if you're walking around feeling, uh, having the feeling of low self-worth and so forth, that's not the way God wants you to live your life. Because he created you in his image, he created you to be somebody, and you are somebody, and you're somebody special. And that's how you should look at yourself. Amen? So just, just pray about some of the things that we talked about today, and uh, continue to uh, study the Word of God with us, and continue to study uh, with us in this particular study. And I, I, I pray that you'll be blessed by what we're studying. And, and I pray that it will give you uh, the encouragement to look at yourself differently. Okay? All right, we're going to break it off right here and then we'll come back next week and then we'll finish unpacking this. In the meantime, you have a blessed week, have a safe week, and continue to be safe. And as I always say, uh, continue to cover yourself up and cover your face up and do whatever you have to do to keep yourself safe from this virus out here. Amen. And uh, if you happen to be listening to us and you never ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, you can just say, Dear Lord, I thank you so much for loving me so much that you sent your son to die for my sins. I admit that I need your love and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ paid for my sins on the cross. And I receive you by faith as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept you. Your forgiveness as a free gift. I accept your salvation as a free gift. Amen. Salvation is something that God, we all need salvation. We all need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is the only way. He said, for I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So if you never have a chance to use Christ to be your Lord and Savior, then you pray that prayer with me and believe in your heart that he is our Lord and Savior. He will come into your heart and say, Amen. So if you pray this from your heart, I believe that God will hear you pray. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you. And uh, I hope you come back next week. And share with us again. That's my head.
Father, we thank you for the privilege to come and say your word. We thank you for what you share with us today. We thank you for the wonderful message that we heard today uh, from the pulpit. We just pray, oh God, that you will continue to bless us in a special way. Bless those who are still in bereavement. Bless those who are in need. And bless those, dear Lord, who are suffering. Uh, sometimes, Father, we forget about those who are going through some very bad times. But we want to continue to Pray for those who are uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee and so forth who uh, dealt with those bad tornadoes and that, uh, that calamity that went through there a few weeks ago. Those people are still suffering, Father, so we just pray that you continue to bless them and lay your hand of protection upon them. This we pray in your precious name for your sake. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And have a blessed week. And I will see you again next week. God bless.